you know if you want to study india if you want to study hinduism you have to know about the two great epics of india ramayana and mahabharata which tells the story of ram of the surya vansh and the story of krishna from the chandra vansh and these stories were written uh, written down 2000 years ago if these stories happened the events may have occurred 3000 years ago uh, and it was transmitted orally for a very long time before they were actually written down 2000 years ago and then about 1000 years ago they started being translated in various languages so whether it is marathi tamil odia bengali kannada you will have ramayana and mahabharata in each and every language in the form of song and story in theater performances it is through these two epics that indians know about their culture we know about concepts like karma dharma about yagya about sanskaras everything that we believe in swarg nark about rid the debts that we owe to our ancestors every knowledge that we have our value systems our knowledge systems our belief systems come from these two epics and these epics are transmitted in a very casual way by parents and children for the new generation you know it was my great desire to present it in all its glory and therefore i began a long time ago almost 10 years ago writing the mahabharat this is my jay mahabharat which has been very successful many people have liked it because i have not tried to edit the story i have tried to show you the width of the story the complexity and the depth of the stories what does krishna have to do with this war what is this war all about this 18 day war involving 18 armies and two parts of the same family the kuru vamsha and their relationship with krishna and the complexities within it and how it is a battle over generations you know it begins i mean the first time i know the sentence i remember it was a son renounces sex so that his old father can remarry now that one line i remember writing this line a long time ago somewhere in 2006 you know i don't even remember when this book was published now but it's 2010 so 7 years old i must have written started writing it in 2008 um and I, it has 200 images i wanted people not to be stuck with the television images of mahabharat or with amar chitra katha images of mahabharat i wanted to expose them to new visual vocabulary and therefore i wrote the book jaya and the original name of the mahabharat and it was natural that one day i would write sita on the ramayan and of course we ramayan is more popular than the mahabharat and therefore the mahabharat when you bring it out in a simple readable way people love to read it it is about the width of this great epic But when you read Ramayana, I wanted to make people aware of the depth of the epic. It is a far more complex epic than Ramayana. Although it is, sorry, uh, Ramayana is far more complex than the Mahabharat because uh, although it has fewer characters and it's very linear, the tension between the characters can be read in many, many different ways. There are layers and layers of thought, and there are so many versions of it. In every language, the first literature written was the Ramayana. and i wanted to present it not from sita's point of view although many people think it's sita's point of view it's not sita's point of view i just foreground sita in the beginning and when you start writing it you realize that how different it is in structure the structure of the ramayana is very different from the mahabharat and once i had written the stories for adults the question came how do you tell these stories to children how do you tell the mahabharat about brothers who fight over property how do you tell children a girl child especially about a husband who abandons his wife pregnant wife in the forest how do you tell children about single parenthood all these ideas came to me and that made me write these two books for puffin and this is the ramayan for children the girl who chose and this is the mahabharat for children which is the boys who fought and i wanted to write the story without editing the story or too much i don't want to remove the story or sugar coat the stories if you want children to know our culture you must tell the story as it is but how do you make it child friendly without dumbing it down that was the great challenge and you know i figured out this answer i realized ramayana is a story of a girl who chooses you know when i was doing my research i realized in the ramayana ram never makes decisions decisions are made for him but sita makes choices she makes five choices in the ramayana and the whole book is designed around one two three four five choices of sita do you know what those five choices are and if you don't know buy this book they will tell you about these five choices and you'll realize that just making the choice is not easy everybody says i have my choice but a choice has consequences and the consequences need not be pleasant you may think you're doing the right thing but it'll have a negative impact 
and then you realize why in the Mahabharat Krishna tells focus on the action don't get caught up in the results and the idea really comes from Sita's life the choices she made was she happy with all the choices and the most important decision in her life was not taken by her but by her father all these things are discussed so the parents can discuss with their children as adults and prepare them to be good adults this is the role of parenting I feel parents which teach children to be good adults prepare them for the horrors of life life is not so pretty you have to take tough decisions you have Ravan in your life, you have to deal with the Ravans, you have to deal with the Kumbhakarnas, you have to deal with the Vibhishans, you have to deal with Ram, Lakshma and all these things. You have to deal with the forest. So that's what you get in this book. Five choices of Sita. And then and then you talk about fighting. You know, is fighting good or bad? Ahimsa is a good quality, we are told. But will we fight for justice? Is fighting for justice himsa or ahimsa? These are questions children will ask their parents and parents don't know what to answer. Is it right to fight your brother for property? But it happens everywhere in every business family around. We see fighting happening in the office. We see husbands and wife fighting. So what are the different kinds of fight? And this book talks about the Pandav brothers, the five Pandav brothers, and the six different ways. Six different ways in which they fight. First time as orphans. The second time as refugees. The third time is kings. In fact, they are not really good guys in the story, the third time. The fourth time they are exiles. The fifth time they are fighting for their land as warriors. And the sixth time they are fighting as hermits. When you have nothing, you still have to fight for a place in heaven. So six different ways do you fight. Therefore, these books were written. So this is Ramayana and Mahabharata for children. It does not compromise in the knowledge, doesn't make it stupid, does not, but yet makes it accessible to children. And the best part were the, the images. I just love doing these images. You know, different ways in which you draw these images. I love doing these images. You know, there is Meghna, there is Kumbhakarta sleeping. This is Kubera on his flying chariot who actually built Pushpak Viman. Or oh, here is see, the golden Sita. The golden Sita. Or, and there's a conclusion. You know, the Sita inside you. What's the Sita inside you? It applies to both men and women. Anybody who's willing to make a choice. So, you deal with gender issues really in this matter and how decisions are likened with seeds and the results of those decisions are the fruits and not all fruits are sweet. And then when you come to the Mahabharata, again lots of images, lots of dialogues. There's the story of Ekalavya, there you can see him, that's Ekalavya. And here is Jarasandha being ripped into two, so that's violence for you. Hinsa, is it necessary but sometimes, and the emoji Kauravas. The Kauravas are emojis. And how do I identify the five Pandavas? They all have tattoos. So they have tattoos like uh, N for Nakul and S for Sahadev. And of course they have their Dvajas or Patakas. The monkey Pataka, Kapi Dvaja for Arjun. And you'll find this everywhere. And there is Gita in just two pages. Just two pages. That's the Gita. The essence of the Gita. Or what happens on day 13 of the war? Something happens. What happens? A clue, you can see something, somebody trapped there, young boy, you know who he was? So pick this up, read it. So as a family, I hope, you know, this is for the son, the daughter, or the daughter, son, whichever. This is for Papa, this is for Mummy, or this is for Mummy, and this is for Papa. All of you all can have a great family time with Indian culture, with Devdutt Nayak. Thank you.